All right, fellas, we are live. So the 21, was it, 21-16 draft? Yep. What would you guys think of it, by the way? I I wasn't a fan. I mean, my first glance over, I'm like going, God, this is shit. And then my second glance over, yeah, it's still shit. Third glance over, I, you know, looked a little bit better. I stopped after the second glance. I thought it was yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Howie? What would you think of it? Um, it had talent in positions that I, I didn't need. Um, it was definitely it was definitely talent poor in the skill positions. But if you needed to get an offensive lineman or defensive lineman, it was a very good draft class, I thought. But overall, it was shit. Yeah, that's. I think that's the main thing. There was no generational... Uh, wide right. receiver, no quarterback, no running backs. And those are the things I typically look for to say, hey, this is going to be a good draft. You know, there's right. three wide receivers and two quarterbacks and three running backs, you know. You know, there were there were some very good safeties and defensive backs. Um, there was some, you know, studly DN types. Um, but, yeah, the position, that, you know, the sexy positions that everyone looks at, that looks to trade up, and there wasn't any of those. I well, was Clay telling, would beg to differ. Yeah, I was telling <laughs> We'll <Greg>. talk about <laughs> that. We'll talk about that the next pick. Uh, okay. So uh, let's look at Fairbanks, and then we'll get into Paris's pick next. Um, Fairbanks takes the wide receiver. He went 2-14 last season. So he dropped off from the season before. In 2021-14, he was 6-10. Um, and, and then he went to 2-4. Uh, two and fourteen. I meant. Oof. But yeah, got- it's kind of been a steady decline from him since he was champion. Um, he went eight and eight the season after that, six and ten, and two and fourteen. So, but he did get a player he needs, as you can see from his team. Uh, he's got an aging wide receiver, lemon season. So this guy's going to help out. I actually like his pick. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I mean, that's he was. I don't know if he'd be a consensus 1-1 because I think there was one other wide receiver that was okay, but I I I like this guy. Because you look at his defense, he's he's got the pieces on defense, so he didn't need to take the defensive ends that were there. So wide receiver was either the smart pick or to trade out, and hopefully he can get picks next season, and hopefully he can maybe parlay those into getting a top, top wide receiver. Yeah, but this guy will do. I mean, if that route running sticks to where it's at and that endurance keeps climbing up, he's going to be an every down guy. So, yep, got a good size. Maybe move him to, to split end, but yeah, or every formation guy. I mean, well, this is the game scout. They have him at forty two sixty three. My scouts have him at forty one sixty. So he'll drop a little based upon my scout. Yep. So I don't know where it's going to be. If it's the route running, then it's not going to be good. We will see on that. All right, let's take a look at the next guy. So Paris takes the defensive end. So let's take a look at this guy, and let's get his team on the board. Now, I was talking to Grim, by the way. There's like a little side story here. I was trying to trade up to... Um... One, two. So I offered him three first-round picks for um, getting back in there. Now, Grim that... thinks I was crazy. Yes, and that would be my question, Howie and Chris. Would you guys have traded three first to go up to one, two to get this guy? This guy? Yep. Well, those no. two, it was two different guys. It was this guy and the other guy that, um, um, what's yeah, his name that called? Rochester took. Rochester. No, uh, I no, I wouldn't trade that much to get him, but I probably would have taken him if I was in this. You know what I mean? Like if I was looking yes. At, yeah. I mean, he's, oh, a, yeah. he's, he's, a, he's, he's a solid pick. He's, he's, you know, I'm not going to, question that pick at number two or critique it at number two it's a great pick but would i have traded three first round draft picks to move up for for a defensive end 
I wouldn't. Yeah. No, but I, I have wouldn't. two. But I, but I have two defensive ends. You know, maybe, I don't know. I have shitty it's, defensive ends, and I wouldn't have traded three first for them. Uh, mainly because I think, you know, firsts are such a crapshoot. I mean, you know, Clay, you were, you know, again, you know, a half a game away from having a top 10 pick. You know, if you end up with another top season, you know, suddenly you're giving up a top 10 pick plus two more firsts for a defensive end. And even if he's a Terry Hopper, I don't know that he's worth it. Mm-hmm. I mean, my, my th- is if you I mean, got that talent in the third round, I picked that uh, Copella guy. I don't know if you want to pull him up or not. It doesn't matter. But he's almost rated 60-something, you know, and that's a third-round pick. So, I mean, I, I definitely would not have traded up. If I, like, I'm with Howie. If I'm at this pick and that's, I got the choice of those two defensive ends, I have no problem picking one, two. But trading way three first to move up for a defensive end, I just could not. Could not do it. Well, the good part yeah. is that he stole because he had to go to work. And um, that delay in our conversation allowed me to, to make a deal with um with Ken, with Houston. All right. I picked up his defensive tackle. And so I gave him uh, a first, and that was it. The deal was done. Yeah, and he's a, he's a pretty decent tackle. Mm-hmm. And in fairness, I, I should mention, you know, you mentioned your guy Coppola, who is a nice third round pick, but he's completely different type of defensive end. I mean, yeah, he's got he, no pass rush technique. Yeah, yeah. More which of is a really the stuff. bar. You know, he's really, that's the bar you're looking for. I mean, in terms of, you know, the, the kind of defensive end that he got, you're only going to get him at the top of the top half of the first round. I mean, you're not going to get that guy in the third round. But again, I think three first would have been too much to give up for him. Mm. So that was a little side story on that part. But for one two, what do you guys think of him? Yeah, I based on this this draft class, and uh, you know, I I would have taken him there too, probably if I couldn't if I, if I couldn't have traded out, I would have probably taken three firsts for him. Yeah, he's got defensive ends, by the way. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's what I was just looking at. So this pick, I guess, doesn't make sense to me if he's he's already got three decent ones. But I, so this is well, going to be a great great guy, but. BPA, but if you had three first round picks on the on the offering for him, I think the smarter pick would have been to, to take it. Yeah, and he's you know, solid at the... defensive tackle too. So his his O line was our D line was not hurting at all. Not at all. One bit. Howie, what do you think of him? I think he's a solid defensive end. What is what does his other defensive ends look like? Solid. He's got um he's got one at it's a sixty sixty rated. So that let's look at his defense. Right. Uh, so this is one of his guys. This is his other guy, Howie. I so, mean, the, the the first thing I noticed right off the bat with Big Frank is uh, he's he's nine seasons deep, right? Mm-hmm. So you're sitting at one two with the with this draft class and an aging defensive end. I'd probably yeah, I can see why he would make that pick. Yeah, I have to agree with you. You know, and I think and 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 Booty's an upgrade on this guy anyway. What's his what's his what, what does he have left on his contract? Uh, which one? Uh, Big Frank. Well, he's got three years. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'll take him to the end. But he's of he's movable. I mean, he might be able to get yeah. somebody to give him a third or a fourth round pick for the guy. Well, and, know, and, he, and save a bunch and even of money. With the, and... and even with the with the with the you know with that bonus money, he's cuttable too. You know, you're going to take yep. five million this year and ten million next year in this league. What's that? That's a that's a drop in the bucket. That's not anything. So now with um, with Booty, would you um, up his um, strength? Not his strength, his weight. No, I'd try and get him to trim down if I'm going to play him at the end. Yeah, because he is a four three over in Paris. So so four three over, he the yeah, you'd almost want to drop weight on him, but I don't think at that. Six six, he's going to drop six, weight. Prob- yeah, at six six, even if he did drop weight, I mean, he, then he, he, I'd, I'd be willing to bet you if you looked at his weight training, it probably says that he's average for the position in terms of body mass. Mm-hmm. But he's, you know, above average height, above average weight, probably average body mass. He might just keep him right where he's at and play him at defensive end. That's what I would do. Eddie Dunlap, uh, defensive end I drafted, who ended up in the Hall of Fame, was best suited for a three four. I run a four three. 
He was about the same weight. Maybe he was six five. I can't remember what his, what his height was. But I didn't weight train him. I didn't change positions on him. That, that's where he played. He was a stud. So I wouldn't touch this guy. I'd leave him just the way he is. But that's the, just me. The game's um, scouts have him at 40-85. My scout has him at 39-80. So he might he drop. drop a little bit too. Mm -hmm. He's going to be in the 75-80 to 80 range though regardless, I think. I mean, unless he gets, you know, BSOD'd. But you know, he's got pretty high volatility, so you never know. But I think he's still going to be a you know, top-tier defensive end. And Paris went to – he was 3-13 and 13 last season. So he's got he's got the team. He just doesn't have the quarterback but at all. Yeah. yeah, I think last show we kind of talked about how we keep thinking he's going to get to that eight and eight mark, and he just doesn't do it. I mean, he's got again. I think quarterback's going to be the problem here, unless that uh, Alejandro Alejandro Lindsay, you know, pops off and keeps an upward climb, but yeah, he's yeah, fifty two percent some... developed. He might end up close to fifty, honestly. Definitely got some pieces in place there. Yeah. Yes. He needs to do something because those guys are gonna go to waste if he doesn't. All right. Let's look at the next pick that came up. Next pick was um wide receiver by Snap Fingers. Let's get him up. Yeah, he was the guy I was targeting as the number one wide receiver. I figured he'd go first. I was a little bit surprised by Rodgers. Let's take a look at him. And let's take a look at Snap Fingers. All right. As we know, Snap Finger has a quarterback. He's got running backs. He's got, He's got nice wide receivers. Team. He's got wide receivers. His line is not bad. D line's fabulous. Mm -hmm. I mean, no super studs, but plenty of depth. Now he's pretty good at linebacker. Secondary is a little worrying, but no, it's 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 time to get something going. Frankie Leach ain't getting any younger, and I like the pick. My snap finger also went three and thirteen. Um. I also like the pick. But like you guys said, there wasn't a stud wide receiver. But that's the best you can do. Yeah, and if I was 1-3, that's, you know, and he was there, that's a guy I would pick there as well. Now, yeah. he might he might pop because of, yeah. look at the scouts have him at 42-50. My scout has him at 48-63. Yep. So mm -hmm. He might even go past that. He might go where the bars are showing on uh, on the screen. Yep. So, it would be a very, very good pick if that's the case. Yeah, if he pops off a little bit, that's that's a great pick. But, yeah, I'm with Chris. That's the wide receiver I had thought was going to be the best out of the, out of the bunch. Now, what made you guys think that? What was it? Well, I mean, his bar profile, Bars, I think, looked yeah. better. And, uh, yeah, I mean, really, that was about it. Yep, just the bar profile for me. How are you like this guy? Yeah, I like that guy. And I, I, I agree. I thought he was the better of the two wide receivers just based on the bar profile. Well, the getting downfield near maxed out, big play near maxed out. I mean, he, he just seemed like the guy. Was it the big play receiving, being static, that got you guys thinking that as well? Yeah, well, and that's I think what kind of lends I think what lends credence to that too is the fact that Ben took that wide receiver a little bit later on that had the, the max big play bar, and uh, Melk Poe praised him over the pick. So. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that to me is about as good an endorsement as you can get. Ben took well, him, Melk Poe praised him. So if you and, saw what and Ben Tizak was saying, piped in too. <laughs> yeah, if you saw what Ben was saying in there, he basically saw that Melpo moved up to 19 and took Chesapeake's pick, and he's going, well, shit, who's he going for? I better move up ahead of him. So that's how we moved up to 17 to grab that wide receiver. But we can talk about that then. All right. Good story. 
So that was pick number three. Pick number four, quarterback goes off the board by... Accidental. I Nothing love to... this pick. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we know you do. Tony's up in your division, man. That's right. Uh, I love this pick. Uh, I don't um, know. But you know what? I like I I feel for Tony because I um I've drafting on my phone, you think you hit, you know, you're looking at the thing, you know, you, you think you hit the button, you know, um uh put this guy it. in your in your yeah, priority, and list, priority list and, and you drop it's like I, you know, yeah. there was a there was that, that defensive back, that cornerback that I drafted a couple years ago. That was the same thing. I'm looking through I saw this guy that I wanted to, you know, maybe take in a later round, and I was like, "Oh, we'll add that to my priority list." And I drafted him. Well, shit. So, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, lesson I'll, to be learned: don't add people to your priority list when you're on the clock. Yep. yep. Especially always, if you're on your phone. Yeah. Once <laughs> once you're on the clock, stop adding to your priority list. That's. I mean, I, I did the same. I've done the same thing. You know, because as soon as as soon as you're on the clock, that's when that button appears, and it, you know, I mean, I'd like mm-hmm. to. And I'll say, hey, why don't you move that button like on the opposite side of the screen so I don't have a chance of fat finger in it? Oh, that, instead of that putting does in, happen. So instead of putting priority, he hit make yeah. pick. Yeah, once Select you're player. on the clock, yep. if you're looking at a player in the conscriptor there, there's the there's the little link that says add the priority list. But once you're on the clock, there's a button right next to it that says select player. So if you fat finger it, you're selecting that player and you know, it's like I said, I, it happened to me. It was like third or fourth round, so it wasn't near as critical. But that's, I, I, I'm sure that's what happened. To wow. So, one four. Pick one four. He probably would have taken, and Howie, you're probably very happy about this. He probably would have taken the defensive end. Yep. He would have taken that one that went at five, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Rochester's pick. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing too. But, I mean, if you look at the league scouting and yours he looks like he has a chance to go up a little bit slight but he's got his quarterback yes he does oh now he has a good backup yeah he's got an okay backup (laughs) (laughs) which he's gonna be paying him um nine ten million a season yeah how much is he gonna be making let's take a look at that a boatload Ooh, wow, 21, twenty-one. Yeah, that's 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 and that's painful. that's you can't even cut that guy for a couple of years, man. No, you don't recover from that mistake. You you have to play him all out. You can't even cut him at all. Yeah, you can cut him the you know, like two thousand twenty-one eighteen. You could cut him and just pay the twenty million one year and twenty million the next. It still sucks, but at least you free up that <laughs> you free up the roster spot. But yeah, I don't know. cross your fingers. Hope he pops somehow and. As it stands, I mean, he's a borderline backup. Tony, when when you listen to this, I'll give you a fourth round pick for him. There you go. Throw in as many <laughs> um, uh, mementos as you can to get this guy. Yeah, just, it's just play him out. Try to get him out, and then trade him if you could. That's mm-hmm. just a bummer. If yeah. Drugs was here, he'd have a totally different take on it, but. You know, we're we're a little kinder than Juggs is. <laughs> yeah, Juggs is just brutally honest. That's true. But again, I like Tony, and I just feel bad that he had to fat finger that guy. I yeah, like this gross. guy, by the way. I yep. like this on defensive end. Yeah. yeah. He's a stud, too. What's the league scout see? League scout sees him at 86. Same as me. So, okay, probably, so yeah, probably he's going to be that. Number. Yeah. I mean, he might end up being the better of the two defensive ends taken that early, but I would have yeah. probably done it the same way. I would have probably picked uh, the other guy first also, but, you know. If you look at Rob's yeah, got team, a... by the way, he's been putting together a solid um, roster. Yeah, he just needs to get his quarterback. What were you yeah, going to say, Grim? No, Rob's kind of a quarterback guy, and he just uh, hasn't had one yet. So yeah, He'll be a competitor as soon as he gets one. Assuming he's paying attention. I don't know how much you know, how much time he spends on uh, this league versus what he puts into RZB, but he's he's a perennial contender over there. He definitely knows what he's doing. So if he can get a quarterback, I think he's going to be. Yeah, I think he was on vacation all last week. And he uh, threw out the draft, and I don't think we sat on the clock long on him on many picks. So, no, nope, he's been nope, he was, he's been active. 
yeah, he's been doing what he's got to do. So yeah, I'm, he's got I'm, a nice, he's got building a nice roster. I'm surprised he hasn't reached out to someone on someone's team and like thrown first, first at him. Well, he might just be content with the pace of the league to take four or five seasons building up his his roster before he makes the splash. All right, well, let's check. Let's check the next guy. But I like this pick. Uh, yeah, a for lot. sure. I would have taken, yeah, that's what I was saying. Between the two defensive ends, I would have had to really think about it. But again, you guys are saying neither one are, are worth the three round, three first round picks. No, I mean, you know, you just you know, have to be holder, I guess. Well, I, mean, well, I, I, mean, I wouldn't do it, but I, I mean. I mean, you've been in the league long enough to know, Clay, that a guy like this sometimes, some drafts, if there's tons of skill positions, you know, tight ends, wide receivers, are, 10, you 15. can get this guy at 125. You know, 130. We've seen it happen. So this year's draft just happened to be that there's nothing else available. So, I mean, if I'm at that pick, I'm taking that guy. Otherwise, I'll just, you know, I'm not not trading up for him, though. Oh, I'm yeah, glad. I'll be right back, gentlemen. Good. I'm glad he, um, he had to go to work. So we got the wide receiver pick. So it's the sixth pick. I do not like this guy. I liked him, but only because he's a green guy that would have fit in great on the team. But I was actually thinking he might fall to you know the tail end of the first round, but he did not. I, I wouldn't have taken him as early as he took him. That route running is just uh, the route running and the big play is going to be an issue. Mine is about the route running. It's not there. It's not even at the 50% mark. Uh, let's see what the league scouts say. Uh, league scout has him at 50. I have him at 53. So eh, he'll probably be a 55-ish guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's a decent pick, but I, I think he could have. I think he was a bit of a reach at what was it, one six? Howie, what do you think? I think I'm a terrible judge of talent at the wide receiver position. Um, he was on my draft list as somebody to look at, so I might have even taken him when it got to my position. Well, probably not him. I looked at him, but he wasn't my favorite. But if you need a wide receiver, and that was your number one need in this draft class, maybe you take a chance on him. I mean, what's his – with his four with his four three nine forty? Yeah, he's got maybe the combines. He maybe he boosts a bit. You know, maybe you, you take him. You hope that he pops. Because he has he is he has offense linemen, so he doesn't have to worry about that. His defensive line is very good Stout. as well. Yep, he's got decent linebackers. Could have looked at some of that secondary stuff, maybe a cornerback. But yeah, honestly, I don't, I don't blame him for taking him, but. I just think 1.6 is too early for a guy that's basically, I mean, even from his bar profile, looks like he's going to be a solid wide receiver too, not a one. It's too bad someone wasn't trading their quarterback. He could have said, listen, I'll give you my um, 1.6 for your quarterback because he needs a quarterback, as you guys can see. He's got no quarterback on his team right now. Nope. He's got that rookie guy. uh, Well, he might be the guy. It's got this guy. That might be a starter this year. But yes, um, don't like the pick because of the route running for me. One seven was okay. The offense lineman comes off the board. Pearson, Iowa. I like him, but he would not have been my first choice. Uh, his uh, intelligence is just too low. Let's take a look at him. Yeah. He's got a lot of developing to do. He's only 8% developed, so you never know what's going to happen there. But I just think he's, he's just not smart enough. There was, other, there was other guys available that were, I think, was good in terms of their bar profile. That, uh, yeah, I don't think uh, dummies. 
Yeah, I, that's just a really, really stupid left tackle. He's three intelligence. That's not good. You see this guy causing a lot of penalties in the future. Well, this year, if he starts. Most definitely this year. He's an 8% develop. But looking at his roster. I mean, um, it seems like he's already got a pretty solid O line. Uh, well. Well, okay. I mean, you know, you got a good he's left aging, guard. He's aging at right tackle with Wolf. I don't, I don't have a problem with him taking a tackle. I just have a problem taking a stupid one. I've made a living when, off When there stupid, were smarter ones available. I've made a living off stupid linemen, so I can't comment on the intelligence part. <laughs> and that's why your, your, your penalties were at the top, right? That's right. And I wore that as a badge <laughs> of honor. <laughs> you think he could have taken a cornerback in the secondary? Instead? There were a couple... There, yeah, I, there's I, a couple of decent cornerbacks I, and safeties. I know there were there. a couple of decent safeties. I don't know. I don't know if there was a cornerback that was that jumped off the page at me, but you definitely could have taken us. There were a couple of safeties out there that I would have loved to have had. I don't think any of them though were were one dot seven material. I think. Yeah, I think. I think he had the right idea taking the tackle. I just think he took the wrong one. Yeah, the dumbness thing is big for me as well, um, C Max. Yep, I can't do dumb offensive linemen. All the other positions seem to be not so bad, but just the well, offensive linemen. My man. team is green, so I get plenty of dumb guys. But you know, I'm going green, so I mean, I, I got to deal with the fact that I'm going to have some dumb offensive linemen. It's not that I won't take them, but unless he's trying to build a yellow team. And you know, if he's not trying to build a chemistry situation, then I, I don't see why he wouldn't have taken the smarter guys that were seemingly as good. He looks like he might go down a little bit too. Or is that wait? No, he's, he's going to go up. No, up. He up. might yeah, go up. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, if he if he fills out his bars, I mean, he's going to have all the talent in the world. I think he's just going to still be a problem because he's stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a fifteen penalty a guy or season guy, you know. His roster is not bad. It's it's well rounded. He needs a quarterback. He's still searching for his quarterback, as you can see. But he's building an offensive line for that quarterback that he doesn't have yet. Well, and the, and I guess honestly, if he's good enough to where he, you know, on the season he only gives up two sacks, but he gets fifteen penalties. I mean, is that any worse than giving up twelve sacks and five penalties? I don't know. You know, so it might work out all right, I guess. I mean, he's going to have all the talent in the world. I mean, the guy should be a stud when he's not, you know, drooling on himself. <laughs> okay, next up is the right tackle, uh, Johnny Duffy, Arizona. So who made this pick, by the way? Uh, it's Millman. Oh, Millman, that's right. I'm thinking uh, Millman had a co-GM, but he doesn't. Nope. So let's take a look at Millman. And he is, here you go. So his, he's average on his cell max. So I don't know how his intelligence is going to be. He'll probably his be in the 30, 40-ish. Maybe Johnny 50. Duffy, he's 72 intelligence. Oh, nice. Even better. Yes. Where are you so seeing I, that? Yeah. I'm on the uh, his roster page on the website. Okay. So, yeah, 72 intelligence, and he needed uh, to get a guy in to cover for Devin Stevenson, who's 32. So I think this is a great pick, and yeah. this is probably a guy I would have, you know, looked at if I was Iowa. Well, I mean, he's, he's not a left tackle. Um, I don't know. Well, I mean, he could – obviously could play left tackle, but I don't know that you could move him to left tackle and have Ben out as good. So, you know, I, if he was looking for a left tackle specifically, maybe the next guy that was drafted would have been. But but I like I like this guy. For, I like Duffy a lot. I mean, he's he's going to be real good. No, it's a yeah, it's a great pick. He's got Andre McQueen there at running back still, so that's going to be a road grader type for him for the next few years, at least for well. He'll McQueen's he'll probably go anyways. up. He's, you know, he, he's yeah. going to go up. I think too. He, he is. Uh, I have him at an eighty-three. The league scout seventy-three. He's going to shoot up. 
This was an excellent pick. Yeah, yeah. I like it a lot. It's great. Doesn't pick. have the combines that the guy previous had, so I mean, there's that. But yeah, I really like this guy. He's 22 years old. Melman will have him for a long, long time. Yep. Howie, what do you think of him? Uh, I don't like that pick for Melman because I had him on my list, and that's the guy that I want. <laughs> Other than that, it was a great pick. Uh, if you look at um, his offensive line, it's just a solid – he put a solid team together. Yeah, no, I think you're going to have trouble with him. I mean, he's got that Cody Horner kid who played all right in his rookie season. He's just going to get fucking better. That's right. I forgot about this guy. You know, he had more touchdowns than interceptions. He just, he just, he, he just needs some wide receivers. I mean, that's really the only thing that he's hurting for. Yep. Wide receivers, but again, he's doing the right thing and leaning on McQueen. Yep. And McQueen got, what, High how many? High passing. Yeah, I mean, Horner was 62%. <clears throat> McQueen had another 1,700 yards rushing. You know, and he could just, I mean, he spread the ball around a lot to a lot of different receivers, which is, if you don't have the great receivers, that's kind of what you do, you know? Yep. So, I think it's a great pick, and I think you're going to struggle with this team here in the near future, Clay. Absolutely. I have to agree with you on that. That's why I was going to give three first-round picks for that defensive end. <laughs> Um, let's go into the next pick. Pick nine. So Chicago. So it was Iowa, Arizona, Chicago. Everyone in my division picking. So he picks this left tackle. Don't like it at all. I don't know what he's saw in him. Maybe there's something that we're missing. Maybe he might pop. His 48 yeah. future. Yeah, I, I think he's. I think he's going to pop. I saw him. I saw him a little bit better in terms of his blue bars. I, I would have probably taken him before that other dumb guy. Uh, yeah, and this is a yellow guy as well, but his intelligence is 52. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I I liked this guy. Yeah, as far as those bars show there, that's about what I was showing him with, and you know. I think I think he reaches those. Yeah, I think I think he's going to end up being a sixty-five rated left tackle, and he'll be yep. smart. And yeah, I, I think he's I think he's going to be a real good one. Six four three zero six. That's a good size for a left tackle. So, and <clears throat> Chicago's desperate for offensive line. He doesn't have shit. Mm -hmm. I think, um, and I have to take this back. I think his pass blocking is going to pop up. Even better. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's a need pick and, and a decent pick for for what he could get at that point. Definitely a need pick. So it seems as though offensive linemen, defensive linemen, were the thing in this draft. Do you guys agree on that? Yeah. Oh yeah. In terms of where the quality yeah. was, for sure. All right. Let's go to the next pick. So we're going now to 110. Running back. First running back off the board. Don't like him. This is Moontown. Yeah. I, I didn't like him either. That's what he looks like, fellas. Yeah. You know, that, I, I, he's 24 a years old. First, with that well, he's a middle of. Middle of Maybe a third round guy. I, I didn't 70, like him at all. Yeah, seventy six percent developed, twenty four years old. That bar profile. That's no power inside. Not a good receiver. I mean, he's got whole wreck and endurance. I mean, he might be productive, but I think you could have got him a lot later in the draft. Yes, I agree. And he's going to drop. Yeah, second round pick for me. Maybe even a third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, it's... definitely not the best back in the draft. So, yeah, particularly when you already have a whole bunch of young, mediocre halfbacks already. Yeah, this is a terrible pick. 24 years old. Doesn't have, yeah. like, the bars, like how he picked a 24 year old, but the guy had bars all the way to the end, Richmond. Yes. Yep. And, and he was... wasn't, 
he wasn't 76 percent developed either yeah. i think richmond yeah. was a bit lower than that wasn't he yeah he was pretty close to to that but again but his 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 bars were studly bars yeah like that i mean when i drafted him everything was you know the blue was all the way on the right side of it the, he did not have a lot of holes in his uh, in his bar profile and if you look at this guy's uh, combines, it doesn't even look like he's going to... I mean, he doesn't even have combines that tell you that he's going to improve. I mean, he's got pretty shitty combines, really. Especially that agility. Oh, yeah, you're Howie. Uh, you're right, Howie. Uh, Richmond was 71% developed. But again, bar yeah. profile on this guy, not even close. To not Richmond. even close, exactly. Yeah, I don't know what he saw. And didn't if have you're bars, pick... didn't have the combines, there was nothing there. Yeah, for someone that's 24, you want maxed out bars as much as possible in the areas that you need it. Well, his scouting on his OC is only 50, so I'm guessing those bars are a bit higher for him. But you're doing a cleanup. And based upon my scout, who has him at 47, <clears throat> league at 52, he's going to drop a little. I don't know where, but he will. Yeah. Well, that's really going to be in that whole rec department. He's going to fit right in with that stable of running backs he already has. Yes. Let's just recycle everyone. Mm. All right. Terrible pick. Well, well what what about that? Uh, that Look at that Diego Bruce. Where did he t- pick him up at? D- oh. That running, running, running back, back Diego Bruce? Yeah. Because he's also a rookie. Picked he, him up in the third round. He's going to be a better running back. Let's take a look at him. Um. Uh... Maybe not a better running back, but he's I don't think he's any worse. There he is. Let's see what the Lee Scout has him at. Yeah. Fifty two. I have him at forty six, so he'll drop two. Yeah. I'm I, my my point was just that he's got, he got two yes. running backs, one in the first, one in the third, and they're both gonna be about the same. Yep. Yep. So that means this guy who he picked in the first should have been picked in the third. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that that Diego Bruce was a bad value in the third round. I think Uyak was a horrible value in the first round. Yes. All right, let's go to um, the next one. Howie. Here you go, <clears throat> Howie. Ah. Howie's going to tell us about his guy once I get him all up on um, – on the screen. Oh no, I want to hear your I want to hear your take before I get into my guy. Okay. I like him. I like him a lot. Yeah, me too. I mean, he's red so he wasn't on my radar really at all. And then once he took I'm like, "Oh, holy shit, he's got maxed out route running. This could be a fucking solid pick." Yep. Yeah, I think he's he was he would have definitely been on my list before that uh Hill. Hill. I think he was the he was the third wide receiver in the draft, really. I mean, I it, it remains to be seen what happens with Ben's guy, obviously. But to my eyes, it, this looked like the third, the number three wide receiver. For me, I wish his getting downfield was a little higher. Not a bad pick at all. I like that he has courage. I like that his adjust to the ball is going to be high. Um, so the two things that are negative for me is getting downfield and his endurance. Those are the two things that um, bring him down for me. If his getting down field was at 50, I would love him. And it see, could very I... well get to 50. So, Oh, maybe not on Clay's bar. Let's, right, see. When, when, Let's when, take a look. It's but a wash. Good, Howie. I was not sold on this pick. Um, I just didn't have anywhere else to really go I was looking to get a quarterback in this draft so I interviewed every single quarterback that I thought could fit into my system and none of them came back I mean the best one that came back was hard to read everybody else was either underrated or uh, excuse me, overrated or, or very overrated so I wanted to pick up that one lineman that uh, you know that was the only guy that was really on my list was the the that previous lineman Melman's tackle. Yeah. Melman's tackle. So I kind of scrambled looking through skill players. I did not like any of the running backs that were there. I did not like, you know, I didn't really need, I could have used the safety. There were a couple safeties that I wanted, but there was also a free safety in, uh, in free agency that I could get that I got fairly cheap that I was 
you know, kind of taking a gamble on that I would sign. So I was like, yeah, I'll just take my chance on a running back just because he said, because he had that, that maxed out route running bar. I'm kind of hoping he was, he, he's going to pop. Um, but I didn't realize that his volatility was very high. Had I well, known that when I drafted him, I probably wouldn't have, uh, probably wouldn't have taken him. Yeah, maybe you get lucky in that volatility, volatility will Pushes swing towards the, the positive side. Yeah. Maybe. Yep. Next thing you know, he comes out of comes out of PS two and he's a seventy seven. But this wouldn't be the first wide receiver that I've drafted in the first round that crashed. So I, don't know, yeah, I like him. You know, I think you, I think the, you made the yeah. right call. He's outside the top ten. So once outside the top ten, I worry a little bit less about volatility. But yeah. But you know, with Corey Rose almost ending his career here soon. I mean, if this guy pans out to be even in the fifties, I think it's a solid pick. And even if his route running stays, you know, even if, if he drops, if his route running stays above 50, 55, I can find some use for him and he can be a somewhat useful receiver in some sets. Oh yeah. And right now, courage, and you know, right now it's take him across the middle wide receivers by committee. Yeah. This guy looks like he'd be a real nice slot guy. If his bars hold up and yeah, no, I can see where, uh, looking at your team, Howie, where you're trying to figure out what hole do you want to fill, because you got most of the most of the players there, solid players. Well, and, and and you know, aging wide receivers are the hardest thing to replace. It seems like you know, as they start getting older, it's damn near impossible to find a guy to to fill in. So, right, I think it was a great idea pick, picking up a position that's gonna be a need for sure real soon. You know, that you, you might know, not was... have any luck filling. And I was actually, I was, I was, I texted Red Zone earlier today about some stuff. And I said, you know, I will never have a, uh, I'll never get a wide receiver class like I had with, uh, with Mathis, uh, Dixon, and Corey Rose. That, that trio of wide receivers was fantastic. Now, let uh, me ask you something, Howie. Yeah. I told you I didn't like that he didn't have the get, uh, getting downfield and the endurance. What is it that's bothering you about him? Just the, I mean, it, it, it's, it's the getting downfield. It's the third down catching. It's the big play receiving. You know, I'd like to see those blue bars be a little bit higher, kind of at least three quarters of the way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the courage is okay. You know, the courage is is good. I can get away with running a um, you know a wide receiver with uh, with no endurance, just because of where I do my passing. You know, I pass a lot out of two receiver sets, not necessarily out of the, out of the uh, the one one three, so I can make that endurance work if everything else holds. I don't know. It's just it's a feeling in my gut that I just I don't like it, and I think he's going to drop. Now, you think it's going to be training camp? He does it or PS two? PS uh, maybe a little, maybe a combination of both. Maybe he takes a little dip after training camp, another dip after PS two. I'm pulling for him. I think he's going to be a 60 after PS2. 60 future minimum. We're going to keep an eye on him. It's my positive vibes. Right. I'm sending him your way, man. <laughs> I feel it, C-Max. Keep him coming. <laughs> I'll I don't have many of them. Don't work, but I don't have many of them. <laughs> you can ask Grimmer. I have very few positive vibes. <laughs> I, I think I told um, Grim. I go, Grim, Ben's trading all his picks away. I guess there's no more talent in the um, in, <laughs> in the draft. Yeah, when Ben traded away his whatever dot thirties, but at that point I would have done the same thing. You got the thirtieth pick in every round from here on out. I get rid of them all. Okay, so is this the guy? Yeah, this is the guy that was picked at twelve. <sighs> Defensive tackle, Fort Wayne. <sighs> Let's get his team up. I already hear the breathing from um, C-Max. <laughs> Those, yeah. Uh... Listen, my take, right? I like fast. I like fast defensive line, and the guy runs a four nine eight. I love the run defense bar, and I love the punishing hitting bar, the punishing hitter bar. I think that's a solid pick for a defensive lineman. You well, know, I think he's going to be a solid player. I just think there were other guys that he could have probably used more. That were still available, but in terms well, of, he's... I mean, he'll be a he'll be a he'll be a starter. I mean, you know, I mean, he's going to be a solid defensive tackle. I think. I think he'll he'll stay on the team for 
you know, for quite a while and, and be productive. I just don't know. What is it, 111? 112. 112? Uh, I think, I just think, it's, like I said, I'm just, but again, the draft sucked, so maybe it's not too early. But in most drafts, I would think 112 would be way too early for this guy. Yeah. Um, well, Slam is a 3 4, and he really needs a defensive tackle. He didn't have a great one in there. So this guy's going to feel he's, a, a, he's running mild, a 3 4. Yeah. My only worry is this guy's a little bit yeah. light for that nose tackle. Yeah. He can't, so. he's going to, I'd play him. He's got to move to the end. He's he's best position is a three four D end. He's going to be a D end, I would think. Yeah, I would move him to left defensive end because he's already got a really good right one. So, yeah, yeah, I'd probably I'd play this guy at at, at the end, and and I'd keep uh, Cedric Cole there at his nose tackle spot. Yeah, he's. Good. I mean, it was it was a position of need for him. I mean, this this could work out okay for him. He's going to pop based upon my my scalp. So not sure which which of those ratings are going to pop up there, or I meant talent or skill, I should say, for a better word. Well, if nothing else, the run defense should stay up at the top, and that's I mean in a three four that really is the most important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, you know you're, you're not expecting these guys to get pressure on the quarterback. So I mean I I, I didn't want to make I don't want to make it sound like I think it's a bad pick. He's a great pick. He's going to be a great player. I just I don't know. it's. D tackles at one twelve in any draft just ugh. don't sit right with you. No, but that's this coming from a guy who takes linebacker almost every draft in the first round. So <laughs> <laughs> that's all that's ever there. Linebackers and tight ends. I mean, I think if you went back and looked at my first round picks, it's all linebackers and tight ends. Oh, he got um, Dennis on his team, the quarterback. Yeah, he was the one that signed Tyrus Dennis. He's in my division, so I'm I'm not hoping that he has too much success with him, but I, I hope he gets production out of him. I hope he pans out. Oh, Tyrus Dennis? Yeah. I mean, it'd be nice to see Tyrus Dennis actually play well for a change. Mm. Well, if you're not going to throw the ball 800 times, I think he'll do better. <laughs> I mean... Well, but if you're, year, if you're I mean, only throwing to your fullback and tight end, he might not. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, how you like to pick on defensive tackle? I do. I like it. Yeah, I think he pan. I think he pans out. I, I, I think like he'd be so. better at left defensive end, but yeah. Well, we'll see where he sticks him. Oh, well, let's see if he bumps up his weight. Uh, might be a little short for that. Six three. And I didn't realize how bad he needed that defensive end because that really is where he should play him, but he needs him. So it, it's a good pick, even at 112. Okay, that was 112. Let's see, 113 who came on the board. So we got a wide receiver. Orlando picked up this wide receiver. And was this a missed pick or he wanted this wide receiver? Does anyone know? No, he, I think he picked him. Okay. Yeah, I don't. He's you know that if the route running pans out, then I think he's a solid pick. Big me, plays, not good. Route running's too 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 close to that fifty mark. That I feel like it's not going to hit that fifty mark. Yeah, and the blue bars are a bit better. Or what does the coach say? Yeah, looking like it might pop then a little bit. Yeah, and that if he pops a little bit, it'd have to be in that route running department. But you know, it looks like he's really getting to the point where he needs some wide receivers. Yeah, he's I got think that so. Mitchell Barry holding out, and he's the best guy. And the rest of them are just pretty much thirties and forties. You know. True, he's got linemen. His defensive line, he he's got a couple. There's. Well, one's aging, one's young. He plays a 4-3, I assume. 3-4. Uh, 3-4, three, four. Three, four. okay. So he only needs one defensive tackle. Yeah, and he grabbed four of them in the draft and not drafted, so. He's got an age and safety. I guess it was tough to figure out who to pick, um, and so people went for skill players. 
I'd have probably gone after the safeties because, as Howie's been saying, there's a couple of really nice safeties that were picked after this guy. Eh, he needed wide, well, he needed wide receivers too, though. Yeah, God, I don't know. I can't fault him for taking the guy. No, I, I if I'm at in that position at this pick, I, I would have taken a shot at this guy as well. Just hoping Hope to God that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because if you look at the blue bars, it looks like 50. the route running was going to be better than what it what it re- is revealing he has. Yeah, See, I mean, I, if he was if he was a sixty five seventy route running like the blue bars look to me, and that would be a whole lot better pick. See, you guys look at it that way. I always look at the the beginning of the blue bar as being a high point, and the blue part maybe getting to that point, and that's how I look at players. We're I was optimistic. figuring somewhere in the You're middle. You're pessimistic. Of it. Because uh, if you miss, that's the reason why. I always just try and assume that it's going to, especially if I got a decent, if I have a decent uh, scout, you know, oh, offensive yeah. coordinator for scouting, I, I figure somewhere in the middle of the blue is where it should hopefully end up. Of course, then, my head then. coach has terrible interviewing, so my bars are like 36 points wide, but. For instance, look at my scout, where the blue bar is for his route running, correct? Then look at up now where the green is showing. It's showing it's hitting the 50 mark. However, it doesn't mean it's going to hit that 50 mark when it's all said and done. And so does it land where my scout's actually showing it? Yeah. No, it does. You're right. It's at the beginning of the, yeah, it's at the end of the gray. Almost all those bars. Huh. Yeah, but if you look at Courage, Courage landed right in the middle of them. Right in the middle of the blue. So, I mean, who knows? I don't I don't know how it all works. Hmm. To use Grimmer's line. Yes. All right, so. uh, like you said, I, I, I don't mind the pick. Um, if I'm in his situation, I'll, I take a shot at that yeah, guy there. If you're needing wide receivers as bad as he's needing them, I don't, I don't have any problems with it. Because his two best receivers are ninth and tenth year and they're not even very good so it seems as though people were screwing oh, actually one of them suspended and one of them is uh off the team so those two top yes yeah, so he's got garbage he's got nothing for wide receivers I, I he had to take this guy yeah it's especially with the with the skill position class because if you if you don't take this guy he's not going to be available in the second round when his pick comes up again Yep, there's not going to be Some, anything worth taking. Somebody, exact, somebody else is going to be scooping him up, you know. Well, well, let's let's talk about that. His other guys here, he'll probably resign Mitchell. Well, Mitchell's suspended. It looks like that exclamation point. No, he's holding no, out. That's holding. Oh, out. holding out. Oh, he's holding out. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I thought I thought that was. I can't see. I got to put my glasses on. Damn so it. maybe he can't afford him. But but his other wide receivers that he does have. Uh, yeah. Man. I think it seems like a lot of people are struggling to pick up players because they didn't like the draft and like, let me just grab this guy and hope for the best kind of thing. That's what I felt like. Yep, wing and a prayer. All right, that was pick number 13. Pick number 14, quarterback comes off, and this is... Grim. Dun dun dun. Okay, Grim, you're gonna tell us why you picked this guy, but let me get this guy up, and then Jugs give you shit for him. Oh, of course, Jugs gave oh, me shit yeah. for him. He's still giving me shit to him. He's like, what for were you smoking? Justin could have, no. Justin could have picked up a, a, you know, a generational looking quarterback, and Jugs would have told him he was gonna suck, though. Suck, right? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so uh, desperation, right? But this was more based on a conversation I had with Chris before the draft. We were talking about back in the day before FOF 8. All the guys that didn't throw interceptions had a high soul score and low intelligence. And we were thinking, TZAC's avoid interception calculator, is, it's got to be factoring in the high soul and low intelligence. So this guy <clears throat> um, ends up well, he had the 33 soul score. Can you guess his intelligence, Clay? Um, I have zero idea. Oh. You 33. can't see it here. No. I have he no has clue. zero intelligence. So a 33 soul score and zero fucking intelligence. And right now on his page on the website, 
Uh, let me pull that up. He was he has showing... a moron now. He can barely get his helmet on. Yeah, but a 56 avoid interception already. How is he a zero with a 33? That, that's that, that, that's, that's the yellow the, guys, that's, dude. That's that factor. You know, when when you're looking at the quarterbacks, that that X factor, the hidden, the hidden avoid interception half. I'm almost positive that it's at least partially or majority of you're it muffled. is based on. Sorry, the majority of it is based on high soul score, low intelligence. And if you have a high school, soul score and high intelligence, the avoid interception is not going to be very good. But a good indicator that that avoid interception is going to be high is if he's got a high soul and he's really stupid. Yep. Grim, did you interview this guy? No, I did not. Okay. I did. Nope. Yeah, what did you see for him? Overrated. Okay. I can see. Well, I can see. You can see by here that it looks yeah. like he might even go down some. So. Yeah. Because I, 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 I looked at him. I thought about drafting him, um, you know, just because I think uh, what w Willie Monroe had a similar bar profile, though he was a little bit further to the right in the, the bottom bars. Yep. No. So, again, this, this was mostly based on that conversation I had with Chris about the high soul and low intelligence, and I fucking absolutely got that. Zero intelligence. Um, the scrambling is going to be something that I like. His sense rush is going to be fine. Um, his QB style is short passes, so he'll get a tiny bonus to that because I throw a lot of short passes. Um, Volatility is a bit high. I'm hoping that swings the other way, but I, I do plan on him probably going down a little bit, especially now looking at this. But, uh, yeah, I, again, kind of desperation pick, but I just want you know, like an experiment. You know, I mean, who else am I going to fucking pick here? I need a fucking quarterback. I don't know that any of the other – there was like two other quarterbacks I was looking at, the other uh, – that Tate kid and the, whatever the other yellow guy was. I can't remember what round he got drafted. So we'll see. I mean, I'm going to start him all year. I'm not planning on having a good year next year, and uh, we'll go from there. You know, I'm going to lean on uh, Worcester again and – Let's see what we can do. Well, his bench ah. his bench press is eleven, and his deep pass is off the charts. So I don't think it's going to hit that. Yeah, me neither. And, and overrated at how he said. Usually, it means one of your skills is not correct, or one of the combines is not correct. So that's going to drop some of your skills down. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah, I think so. I'm not exactly sure how the over overrated underrated as red works, but. How are you going to say something? No, I wasn't. No, I, I, I was going to say that, you know, even even all that being said, I, I don't know that he – I think he's going to dip a little bit. He might not be that great. But I still think he's the best of the three quarterbacks that's been drafted so far. Well, yeah, yeah I, 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 just... I, I don't have a problem with this pick at all. Like I said, I almost, I almost pulled the trigger on him, but I just – I don't know. I, I didn't because the overrated in the interview just – I didn't know. I don't. I never interviewed anybody, and for some reason, I interviewed quarterbacks this time, and paid attention to it. So if, if he pops, I'm gonna kick myself in the ass. But good well, on you if he does. Yeah, like I said, I'm kind of. I'm not expecting it for sure. I mean, but I also just kind of look. He's 25 years old, 17 percent developed. That's kind of fucking odd. Yeah. Well, and and the other thing that you can say is, you know, based on your roster, he's. Still better than the other two guys he got. I mean, yes. Even if he, even if he, even if he, <laughs> you know, even if he dumps. Yep. I like his green bars. If he hits his green bars, definitely. He's got yeah, good sense I, rush. I, uh -huh. I should be able to make him work, but I'm, mean, you know, like I said, I'm going to lean on Worcester a lot this year again, and uh, hopefully he doesn't have to throw a shit ton of passes. And hopefully, if he does throw passes, he's not throwing pick sixes like Michelli. Well, he should because he's only seventeen percent developed. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Yeah, if you if you're trotting out a quarterback with only those red bars, you're probably gonna throw some interceptions. But that avoid interception rating will help you. Yep. So what number you're trying to hit on your avoid interception rating for your quarterback that you're satisfied with, Grim? I, I'd like to be over fifty. Right, fifty plus. Mm -hmm. Fifty plus. I mean, even like Miguel Mock, he's sitting at like fifty four point six for Toronto, so All right, there's a pick. 
Great. I'll be right back, gentlemen. Go ahead. Pick 15, the first cornerback comes off the board. And this was uh, Merchant Man. Uh, if you don't plan on playing the bump, he should be good. No, oh, no. Actually, no, the bump's fine. Punishing hitter. Ooh. Yeah, that's zero on punishing hitter and play diagnosis. I mean, any zero bars scare me. Let's bring this up. All right, League Scout has him at 72. I have him at 62, which means he's yeah. going to be dropping down. Yeah. Howie, it, Howie yeah. picks um, good cornerbacks. Howie, I'd like to hear yours on this. Um, I I like the interceptions. I like the, the bump and run and kind of the man-to-man -man combination. Even if, you know, his... Um, his overall rating drops a little bit. If that bump and run and interception bar stay up kind of on the upper ends of that, I like that cornerback. Do you like him at that point in the first round? No, there's better. There's other defensive backs that I would have taken. Now, you said something, Howie. What happens if his man-to-man -man and zone goes down, but his bump and run interception stays where they are? That's okay yeah. for you. That's fine because I got I run two different packages. You know, I I run bump and run against the the two running back, uh, the two wide receiver sets. So he would just be in against the uh, the two one two, and yep. the one two two. If you pull up my cornerbacks, you'll see that I've got the. I've got guys that have high man-to-man -man coverage, and I've got cornerbacks that just have high bump and run, and I pair them off together. So take a look at um, at Aiden Brennan. Oh, let me get Aiden Brennan. Uh, yep. Um, hold on. And he's dropped a little bit over the last couple of years. I mean, his bump and run now shows a 68, but you know when he was <sighs> playing for me, it was up in the 90s. And then uh, da, 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 da. I don't have him anymore. But rubber, but rubber legs. Let's look at rubber legs. He's going to step in and be a be a big player for the same reason, right? He's got a little higher punishing hitting bar. He's got the eighty four bump and run. He's got a, a seventy in interceptions. So he'll uh, he'll see some playing time. Okay, you see but, this guy, C Max, and this is why I asked yep. Howie about his take on Merchant Man's pick. Nope. Oh. Yeah, very he, similar. And he plays, and he plays a lot of bump and run. Well, then, then yeah, then, it, then, then I don't have his. I don't have oh yeah, again. I don't know that I would have taken him this early in the in the draft. But in terms of you know using got, putting guys on your team that fit your scheme, you know if, if he's running a lot of bump coverage, then yeah, that, that's not a bad. I think I think everything draft. he plays is pressed too. I just worry about the play diagnosis being zeroed out. You know, I, I worry about any zero bars being an indication that they're going to tank. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if he if he hits the top of his green bars, or you know, he may be a good fit for his defense, but I just I just worry that this guy's a real high risk. Which can happen. His his bench press is fifteen. But he's got zero punishing hit, and, and his and his run defense isn't isn't good. Not at all. It's a weird player. I don't, I don't know. He might he might be great. I don't, like, but... I don't like the pick. I I I understand what Howie's saying about the interception and bump and run for me. I don't really look too much into it because I don't play it like that. Interception for me is very big, but yeah. I I need um. I need more red on the man-to-man -man on that. Yeah, and this is a guy that I had on my list as well. To take? Yeah. So you like the pick? I do. I mean, it, what's the uh, league scout? Okay, there it is. Oh, so he might go down, huh? No. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. Like I said, the zero bars is what did it. What what? I mean, I had him on my list, but and I would have probably considered him when I picked because I need corners. But 
I, I, I think I would have passed on him. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'd have changed my mind depending on who was there. But uh, well, I guess we'll see because that zero bar on play diagnosis. That I, I hate that on on secondary on corners. Yeah. No, but Matt had said something in the forum after I drafted the uh, the Christensen kid. So this was his consolation prize, I guess. Well, it's going to be fun to see um, how he lands. Let's see. Yeah, and I was mostly forward. looking at him because I, uh, he would have been an affinity for me. So, oh, that was pick fifteen. Here's a, a offensive lineman. Looks good so far. As you can see, I was scouting him. Um, I forgot what he came up as when I scouted him. And who took him? Orlando again. Yep. So Orlando had two first round picks. He he might have moved up. I scouted him because of I loved his um soul. Yep. His combines look about right for his bars. Yep, he's eighty one in the scout see? And Lee Scott has him at seventy one. Yeah, see might end up in the 60 to 65 range but even at that that's that's pretty good I liked him because he had the pass blocking for me he's got good run by he's got good endurance he's 22 years old and he had a high um, soul yep yeah that translated yep. to 81 intelligence so he's not going to be a penalty guy but yeah he, no, he's I, a little bit he's a little bit light for right guard either bulk him up or maybe play him at center yeah, or left guard and really. left Yep. Probably play him at left. But yeah, he's got uh, Dave Lyle aging out for his. Yeah, he, he needed some O line help. So I think that's a solid pick for him. Yep. Yeah. How are you going to say something? No, I was not. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Okay. Was this a guy in your um, radar? Um. You know, I know. He was not. I wasn't looking for guards. I was looking for tackles. Um, he's a guy. If I needed a tackle, I would have looked at him. I like the pick. I like the pick. You know, especially in this draft, the run blocking is solid. The pass blocking is is good. His endurance is great. So I think it's a good pick. But no, this guy was not on my list. Now, does it bother you guys getting a player offensive lineman that's like eleven percent developed or eight percent developed? No, not at all for me. No, i Oops, sorry. Go ahead. I've I've had some um, some linemen that I picked up, you know, like that nine, ten, eleven percent developed in um, in free agency two that turned into studs for me. So that 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 percentage developed doesn't uh, doesn't turn me off. Yeah, and I I you know I don't know that I would want to have to start this guy this year because I don't think his combines look like they'll carry him. But if this guy had, you know, like 35 or 37 bench reps, I'd probably feel better about starting him this year, even low develop like that. But I think I, I would probably be leery about starting him this year. But you prefer, I shouldn't say prefer, I should rephrase it this way. Um, when you're picking a high with your draft pick, you want a player that you can put in right away that's maybe 50% developed. Uh, uh, not not necessarily. Okay, go ahead. Tell me. No, not necessarily. I mean, it depends on on the position, I guess. For offensive linemen, I wouldn't want to start a guy real low developed if he didn't have you know big combines. Uh, but I, you know, I mean, but I prefer the low uh, development wide receivers. I think they have a better chance of panning out, and I'd still play them. Yeah, and honestly, yeah. Chris, his combines weren't bad. Everything blew except for bench, and then his soul was uh, 38, and that's red. So, so not terrible yeah. combines. No, not terrible. I, I just, I just, like I said, I just, I th and I maybe I'm mistaken, but I thought I heard somewhere <laughs> along the lines from either a Ben or a T Zach or somebody who knew something. Maybe it was Jugs. I don't want to admit he knew something, but um, but something to the effect of you know, if you're taking a guy that's got low development and you're going to start him. If he's got really big combines, it'll help him play to those 
you know, the bigger bar level, I guess. I, I don't know if that makes sense. No. But if their combines are big, then they'll play to their potential more, even if they're low developed. Look at look at this guy right now. So League Scout has him at 71. My guy has him at 66. A slight drop. Look at how my guy sees him with the green bars. And look at when I interviewed him. It's just a slight drop off. The green bars are a slight drop off from when I interviewed him. So you yes. can see where he can he might end up at. They're pretty much right in the middle of your yellow bars where he ended up at. Mm -hmm. So that'll be the slight drop off. Yeah, so I think he's. Yeah, I think he's good. I like the pick. Yep. So that was that pick one um, sixteen one seventeen was another. This is the guy I know. Grim texts me. He says, "Did you see this guy?" <sighs> I'll let you guys talk about him. Let's get Tucker on the board. Everyone's like... Yeah, Jops him. was even in the forum right away going, what in the fuck? So this is where... They talked about the... Uh... <laughs> oh, Jesus, this guy's going to explode. <laughs> Look at that, 37 to 51. Oh, man. Yeah, so this is where they're talking about and what, you know, I'm trying to catch, ca what's the word? Catch up on, I think. Uh, just trying to figure out. So this guy, his agility drill does not match that big play receiving bar. Correct. And that's kind of what these guys are talking about. You see this guy with this giant-ass bar maxed out, and his... Jill or whatever no, doesn't it's, match it. It's, it's a static bar that the combine doesn't match. It's maxed out. You grab the guy because they got his fucking combines wrong. It's not the agility bar. It's his dash. Yeah, agility drill. Sorry, is the big play receiving bar. So the agility drill does not match up with the big play bar being maxed out. So it's time to start looking at more guys like that. I think. And look at that again. Shows right there. League scout versus what your scout says. So I think that that guy's going to be a player, and that's the guy that, like I said, Ben had saw that Melpo moved up to 19, so he's like, well, fuck, who is he looking at? Move up to 17 and take a look. So this wasn't even something Ben was planning. He just saw Melpo make a move, and he's like, well, I'm going to go take a look at this, and bada-bing, bada-boom. Mm -hmm. I, no, I hear what you're saying, and I'm sure there's going to be people next draft going to be pe picking guys with big play receiving bars that are stacked like this, and hopefully they're thinking they're going to pop. And 10 GMs are going to get it wrong. <laughs> they're going to be real disappointed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and one is going to get it correct. And I don't right. even think one's going to get it correct. I think 11 GMs are going to get it wrong, and then... Ben's going to come in and draft somebody not on their radar and get another 77 wide receiver. And I'm going to bang my head against the table saying, what the fuck? Because <laughs> well, I just think is this is, this is why I get so frustrated when I draft wide receivers, because I don't understand it. I don't get it. And the more I try to, to, to look back and see what Ben's looking at to draft these wide receivers, the more I don't get it. It just, it's just this endless cycle of misery for me. Yeah, and this guy was a red flag for me because his route running bar looked like it was going to be mediocre at best. It still looks like it's not going to be good. I would not be excited about this guy were it not for the fact that I that Ben drafted him, Melkpo complimented him, Tzak complimented him. I'm curious to see what he looks like at PS2 because right now he still doesn't look like a guy that I'm excited about. Correct. Yet my scouts have him at 51. That mm -hmm. means that route running bar is going to go up. Yep. And the league has that, him at that... 37. Yeah, he just had a bad day at the combines, and a lot of that is probably he just – maybe he got drunk the night before and he was hung over a little bit, so his soul test sucked and his position drill sucked, and, you know, he just coordinated. I don't know. But that looks like an instance where maybe he just had a bad combine day. Yeah, but he's still got a bad route running bar too, though. I mean, the the bar. Yeah, but that's gonna pop. Yeah, and yeah. but well, I'm the... sure it will. I just I wouldn't have predicted it. 
yeah, the sole score in the drill don't say it's going to pop in the position drill. That doesn't say it's going to pop to me, but well, I guess we're going to find out, man. See, Max, I'm on the same page like you. I would never draft this guy. I would look at his route running, and I would have said he's never going to get past that 50 mark. And they, yeah, I mean, I'd be looking at him in the third or fourth round if 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 he was a guy that I you know that was a chemistry fit or something. I, but again, obviously Ben knows what he's doing. So, and look what he's going to be paired with. Uh -huh. Ta da! But I feel how he's frustrated. Whoa, whoa, as whoa! Well. Go back and look at him again, real quick. Just... Oh wait, um... there he is. Okay. All right, so we got. 52 soul and what's his intelligence 85 huh. well 52 soul I guess doesn't really matter how smart you are because he's got like a 98 avoid interception rate oh he does yeah, yeah, he, yeah he's like the best quarterback in the history of the league I'm pretty sure <laughs> <laughs> you just made Jug's head blow up you know that right <laughs> yeah well you know he's young he'll get over it yeah, I think that will go down once his bars fill out, but yeah. So yeah, again, 52 soul, I mean, that he's, like I said, I, I don't think that avoid interception is going to go down. I'd be willing to bet you it's, it, well, it stays in the 90s, I'd, I'd bet. 4, 4, 5, 40, oh, he's going to be a scrambling fool too. Yeah, this this guy's. Oh, yeah, he's got three affinities as well. Yeah. He's the rich man, Sosha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good pick, Ben. Excellent pick. Oh, I, so, you know that agility drill? I think I, it's wrong. That that's not for big play. That's for getting downfield. So it's, I made a mistake. That it's the, it's the running. It's the dash. Mm -hmm. But the dash also was just four four three. That's not super special, you know. Yep. And here is Colorado's wide receiver. He picked up. I really liked him at this spot in the draft. And he still doesn't have the big uh, third down or the the big uh, get downfield or big play, but that route running bar is real nice. Yeah, this is a guy that I looked at in my spot at 111. Well, he's got the quarterback, so he doesn't need a quarterback. He's got his running back, so he's good there. He needed depth at wide receiver. Yes, he did because he has an agent wide receiver. What's the uh, league scout see this guy doing? Uh, league scout. Ooh. Ooh. That could get ugly. Yes, it can. I don't like him because of the same thing, like I said with Howie, is that his getting downfield for me is not there. Doesn't even get to the 50 mark. Um, he doesn't even have courage. He's adjusted to the balls, okay. And his endurance is barely making it up to 50. The only thing he has good for him for me is his route running. That's it. I can get, yeah, you can, you can find this guy in a free agency market. Just a high route running bar only. My yeah. take. And he's 24 years old. I can see it, but he's, he's hurting for wide receivers too, so... And he's short. Everyone rails on short people, so I'm going to start railing on short people. Just be part of the cool kids club. No, I don't mind short wide receivers at all, man. Just move them to flanker well, and throw them in the slot. Well, you don't want to throw them in the slot when they got no courage. No, oh, yeah. Well, that's well. I'll play them at FL then, flanker or slot, depending on their courage. So he might drop. Yeah, and it's going to be that route running that's going to get the take the hit. If that route running ends up near the bottom of that green bar, ouch. And honestly, I mean, looking at the rest of his roster, this is a decent pick for him. He wasn't really needing anywhere else, you know. Yeah, like I said, I, I like the pick based on what he, you know, what his blue bars look like. I'm worried because of what I see the league scout seeing, but I don't, I don't fault him for taking the guy. At, at this but spot. here's the thing, guys: Do you not like say? Um, not sure about this guy. Let me trade out and get out of it. Nobody wanted to trade this year, really, for the high picks. I mean, first round picks were not yeah, I, moved around much because there was nothing there. 
Well, unless yeah, you're no. Ben, Ben or Melko, they both trade well, up. Yeah, but you know they also have that you know supervision where they can just <laughs> spot guys that they like said I, I'm you know you know maybe they'd have said hey this guy's you know five eight and he's from Dallas Texas he's you know guaranteed you know to to, to spike. <laughs> uh, what were you gonna say, Howie? Um, I can't remember. Yeah, I I don't like him. You guys I'm like a, him. I'm indifferent to him. Um, I looked at like I said, I looked at him at 111, but uh, he was rated well below the guy that I took on the high bar sheet. Yeah. So I was like, eh, we'll pass on him. Because it seems like they were cornerbacks and and defensive backs. Um, that could have been picked. And here is Mal Powell's pick. All right. Let me get his team up. Let me get everything going. Let's see what this guy's going to look like. Handley, defensive end. Okay. So this is what he looks like. And his team, as you can see, is just stacked. It's like he doesn't know even know it's where like to what he's, play. It's is. what he super needed a defensive end. But you know, he's the best player available kind of guy. So this guy I gonna be a stud. Okay. Now let's take this guy. What are other teams before him? that could have used a defensive end that didn't take a defensive end and they picked a player that shouldn't have been picked? That's the question. Uh, well. Oh, let's see what the league scout has him at, by the way. Oh, my guy has him a point higher, so he'll go up a little bit. Yep. I like him. Uh, yep. I, I like where his bars are pass rush technique run defense yeah um, got good endurance punishing hit his punishing hit matches his 27 bench rep yeah, See, this, just... this, this is a good example of why you don't trade three first for a stud defensive end because you could have probably moved up and taken this guy for a first and a third if you had tried to trade you know up into the you know top or maybe, maybe even a third with what clay's pick was probably you know, yes you had... he's he's um four three that's weak why. side linebacker my friend i don't know how to use him well just blitz every single fucking yep. play your weak side linebacker blitz <laughs> yeah your weak side linebacker in a three four is essentially a right defensive end he's just standing up but if you're if you if you blitz you know, one man blitz. It's you know, and put him at a nine. He's pretty much just going to be a defensive end rushing the passer. However, I do have somebody that has a good pass rush technique. That's still young on my team. Yeah. That's on um, outside linebacker. But um, twenty one years yeah, no. old. This guy. What do you guys think? I I I like the pick. Doesn't yeah. look like he really needed him, but the Smelko, and I wouldn't be surprised if this guy booms up to eighty. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, even even that. I mean, a seventy-rated stud defensive end. It'll be just going to be a ten to fifteen sack type guy. Yep. yep. He, he's he's got all these young guys. Look at those rookies. They're like in the sixties, and he's going to be over the cap next season. So he'll he, trade three or four guys away for first round picks or second round picks and be back in business yes he will because he's got the quality he's like ben you know i mean every year ben's got a surplus of you know 50 to 60 rated guys that he just can't use because he's got too many 70 and 80 rated guys or whatever but and he picked up a lot of draft picks i think he uh -huh. got him off of um i forgot who it was alf yep yep same thing Malkpo did to end up with his 16 picks that he had. Oh, nice pick. Okay, tight end. Um, this is you, um, C-Max. Yep. 
you don't sound happy we'll get your team up on the board here yeah, I'm not necessarily unhappy I mean I like the guy I think he's going to be a good player um, you know his route running didn't get where I was hoping it would be I was hoping it'd be you know well if it if it gets to the 50 mark he's fine I got Ruzzin who's getting old but I just traded for Fort Wayne's tight end so I now have three tight ends that I got to try and work into the mix this year alone before Ruzzin retires but yeah I just ah, traded for that Bryson Clemens yeah this could definitely be Ruzzin's last yeah, year a... regardless of whether he retires or not you know yeah yeah I'll probably have to move on from Ruzzin but so Clemens, like Clemens doesn't have any endurance, but I have you know I'm gonna have two real good tight ends. So I'll have to do a lot of the one two two stuff. What do you um? What's your coordinator, C Max? Uh, balanced. Balanced. That yep. really now, helped. if I was still running the Air Coriel, it'd be real nice because that's that's what I was doing when I had Rosin and, and Maloney, and I really was able to work two tight ends in real good into the passing game, but. With the balance, they, I have a lot more plays where I have a tight end blocking. So, I mean, I guess, you know, you know I got to have Pat Hammond blocking and, or Ruzzin blocking. I don't know. It, it wasn't a need pick, but it was the guy that I saw that I thought was the best fit for my team. You know, he's green. He's going to fit in with everybody. You know. I thought he was all right, but again, I always end up taking either linebackers or tight ends. I should have I should have taken the the safeties, but yeah. Well, this shows that he might bump up a little bit. But he's also got that ninety five volatility too, which again, yeah. outside of the top ten, I don't worry about. But yeah, this guy, like, I thought Hammond might be a. I mean, I got I got uh, a decent fullback right now who actually is a pretty good receiver. Um, but Hammond's also a guy that I could, if I need to, move into an H back type role, and you know, with his size, six one two fifty, be a decent, you know, fullback, you know, hybrid too. So yeah, this yeah. was this was the first tight end off the board. Okay, yes, it was. I would have much rather had a running back or a cornerback. I, you know, I, I, I wasn't as. Even though my safeties don't look all that great, they have what I'm looking for with their zone coverage. Um, so I wasn't too worried about safeties. If I could have, if there would have been a stud cornerback there, I'd have taken that. But you know, what I really wanted was a running back. But there wasn't anything there, so I just had to settle for Linton in the free agency. But yeah, it was slim pickings. Right back, gentlemen. Good. Um, route running. I have to agree with you, C Max. It's it's too close to that fifty mark, so uh, you're hoping that it gets over it a little bit more. Yeah. I, w I wish it was closer to that third down catching yep. where that was. Oh, for sure. Uh, getting downfield for me, I always like that for um, tight end. However, the route running is more important for me. The rest of the bars underneath that third down, big play, courage, love it. Adjust to the ball, love it. Good endurance. Yep. Um, he's special teams. So it's now I'm getting into special team thing. Yeah, it's, I mean, he's. I, I think he's going to be a, a a good fit, but he's not going to be a. I mean, he's going to be maybe a seventy to eighty targets a year type guy. He's not going to be a guy I can rely on without without route run. You know, but that's where I'll I'll hopefully be able to lean on Clemens because Clemens, if I'm not mistaken, has a a maxed out route running. If his route running stays past that fifty mark at one twenty pick. Um, I like the pick. Howie? Yeah, I think it's a solid tight end. I like the pick. Ooh. Ooh, excuse me. Sneezing. Bless you. I am. Um, no, I, I think it's, a, he'll be a solid tight end. I think I like the, um, I like the, the run blocking. I like the avoid drops. I like the third down catching. Um, courage is good. Yeah, his route running is a little bit low, but I think that you can get by with a tight end with low route running, much um, much better than you can a wide receiver. So I don't think For I don't sure. put as much stock in uh, in route running out of a tight end. Have you guys had successful um, players like that with the route running not being so high for a tight end? I, I've had some success. I mean, I, I think 
I think the key is just not overusing them. I mean, that's, I think, why I did as well as I did last year is, you know, I spread the ball around to everybody. I mean, I think all three of my tight ends had, you know, between three and 700 yards receiving. I didn't have a wide receiver above, I think, 850, something like that, for Bianchi. So I didn't even have a 1,000-yard receiver. But I spread the ball around a lot. I think this guy can be a good quality receiver as long as I'm not targeting him too much. Now, I heard this. I forgot where it was. I'm not sure if it was in our forum or um, RZB forum about tight ends and height, the height of the tight end in the red zone, catching more touchdowns. True. Yeah. You, I, you heard that, right? Or you've read it? I've, yeah, I've heard that, and I, and I, and I want to believe it because it makes sense. I, I, I can't say that I know for sure if it's a fact. But I've heard that, you know, this guy obviously is going to be short for that role, but that's why, you know, he said maybe an H back. Maybe, if, you know, his receiving might actually come when he's, you know, maybe playing fullback in a 212 or a 203. So you're happy with your pick? Yeah. No. I mean,. I wanted a running back. I wanted somebody who I thought would make an impact. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't hate the guy. I think he'll be all right. No, but Chris, seriously, like the last fucking three drafts, you've been wanting a running back, and you just fucking can't get one, not even in the first round, man. Nope. I've been trying, but crazy. there's just nothing there. But like I said, I think that Chester Linton that I picked up in free agency, I think yeah, yeah. I, I think he's a game changer for you. I think I posted that in the forum. Oh, yeah. I like this guy. He doesn't have any endurance, so he's not going to be a, a you know, a bell cow or anything. But I like to pass. I mean, that's my bread and butter. So I mean, I don't want him to run. I don't want him to run four hundred times a season. If he if he carries but, the ball, like you know, one hundred and fifty to a you know two hundred carries on the season, I'll be happy. Yep, that whole wreck, third down running, power inside, gives you little options there. If nothing else, I just want to be more balanced. I mean, my my running game last year was, I mean, terrible. It's been terrible for years. But, you know, my my main ball carrier last year had like 2.73 yards per carry. It was was terrible. And now he's on Oakland, and Jug says he can get him seven yards to carry. Well, he probably will if he looks a lot like that Maxwell guy that he just let go. Yep. Oh, this is a nice guy. Uh, All right, guys, I'm out of here. It was nice talking to you. You All right, brother. Well, Howie. Yep. Have, have a great night. night. Yeah, have a you good too. day, brother. Looks like a great pick right here. Jamal Wilkins. Oh, yeah. Uh, my yeah, scout he's going up. has him at 73. Lee scout has him at 63. Yeah, he's got 82 intelligence. Yep. And he needs O line. I don't like the pick because now that you know Ooh, Frederick Reeves is going to run behind him for a while, but damn. Yes, he needs O line. Yeah, I, I like this guy. I, I mean, if I was smart, I'd have taken him. Although I, uh, I'm doing okay on the O line, but he wouldn't have been a he wouldn't have been a chemistry fit, so I passed on him. But it's probably a mistake because he looks like he's going to be real, real nice. Yes, um, he's 35 percent uh, developed. He's got. Going to have a good pass blocking. He's 22 years old. I always like younger guys, and then um, he's smart. Yeah, I should have just taken him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, that's what it he hurts. might have been a conflict for you, though, too, Chris. I w- I'd have to look it oh, up. Oh, that's right. Yeah, no, the I red think and he's... green. Yeah, didn't we talk about that? I thought. Yeah, we did but too. no, we were talking about the blue guys, the or okay. purple or whatever the hell you see that color as. Blue. But he needs Perry a quarterback. Winkle. Still. Does he, though? I mean, Baskey was injured last year. Baskey's going to be his guy, I think. Ooh, or supposed to be his guy. Uh, he's a 36 rated guy. He's not He's not real good. Yeah, but he traded him from T Zach, so. Yeah, well, I got some players from T Zach that turned out to be garbage, too. T Zach trades away the players that are going to be garbage. Oh, he's nice. And he's a very good salesman. <laughs> yeah, well, I think. I think Baskey's supposed to be his guy. He's been trying to start in the last two years. He keeps getting injured, you know? And when, like, last year, he threw 14 TDs, three interceptions. And that's with him yeah. cramming the ball you... down everyone's throat with Reeves, you know? Yeah, if you're not not going to pass the ball a lot and you, you do a high-efficiency game, you know, you can make it work. 
Yeah, Basky's interception is uh, 54.6, and he's got that scrambling ability, so... So if he doesn't have Reese, is he in trouble? Reese gets injured, yeah, I think he's in dire shit. I mean, last season, before both of our games, he uh, Basky got injured. And he's like, well, there goes our season. Then he whooped my ass. And then the second game, Basky gets injured right before our game. He says, well, there goes our season. Fucking, he whoops my ass. And then he makes the playoffs. So he went nine to seven with um, thirty six rated quarterback. And that's why I'm asking if Reeves is gone. Yeah, if Reeves is gone. He's in trouble. Yeah, Basky I, maybe is like that that Trent Dilfer type of guy, kind of a game manager. He's not going to win any games. Well, I I like nope. this 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 guard he picked up at twenty, pick twenty one, nice pick. Yeah, and I think it's that rushing ability too for back because uh, Tzak had him twelve hundred yards back in twenty eleven or twenty one eleven and ten touchdowns. So. so, yeah, I do like the pick. Now I think this is the first linebacker off the board. This was Toronto, so Tzak takes this guy. Um, you guys are linebacker lovers, so I'm going to let you guys speak about this guy. He's an ideal 3-4 weak side linebacker, but what does Tzak play, 4-3 or 3-4? Uh, he's at 4-3, 4-3 under right now. Yeah, I'd make, I mean, maybe that's what he's thinking, is maybe he moves this guy to kind of a tweener type thing maybe plays him at defensive end sometimes but I think if he if his bars pan out I think he's going to be good a little bit yeah, heavy I... to play in a 4-3 but that linebacker but yeah I would still play him at that weight at strong side but I, I for me I would more than likely move him to a right defensive end oh in a 4-3 looks like he's going to yep it looks like he's going to pump up a little bit so mm-hmm Yes, because if you look at his punishing hit, his punishing hit and his pass strength, those two are his static bars, correct? Yep. And they're there, so he's probably seeing that to maybe those other bars to move. I, yeah, I, I like the linebacker. Yeah, I do too. Color was, yeah, me too. Yeah, and his bench was blue, 24, wasn't red, but... No, it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit low for a a defensive end. I think defensive ends, you want them at least 27. But I, You know, back back when I had Ebeling, he was a weak side linebacker. I moved to right end, and his pass rush strength ended up being high, even though he had like a 23 bench at linebacker. So I don't I don't know how conversion shit works, but and I don't know if this guy will even be a conversion, but yeah, I like the pick. Didn't necessarily need linebackers, but, uh, but you know, we'll see what uh, T-Zack sees in him. Plus well, he's, if, he's, if he is a, a blue guy, so he may be in a, might be an affinity. Now, is Tzak a good drafter? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. No, no, I know how as a good game play planner and stuff like that. I, I wasn't sure. Oh no, he's real good at he's real good at drafting. Oh, no, no, I put him as I put him up there with Malco and Ben in terms of knowing how to find yes. the, the gems deep. Gotcha. Yes. Yep, he's got the infamous list that we've talked about on other shows before. No need to bring it up again. Mm -hmm. Well, nice pick, t -Zack. I like it. And this is pick number 23, Atlanta. First safety off the board. So, Swing Dog. I was looking at this guy. And, um... Nope, not that guy. Yeah, there's that zone. Yep, I love him. A little bit low on the endurance for my side, but the interception's good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be balanced out. It'll drop slightly. Yeah, it may, may drop a little bit, but if that zone sticks, I just stick it back at three safety and let him, let him whirl. I like the pick. Good interception. Yeah, it, zone. Yeah, Atlanta needs corners and uh, uh, 
he definitely needs safety. So that's that's a great pick, I think, for him. Yeah, if that zone stays 80-plus, I mean, he's a perfect free safety. And he needed it. Yep. His um, yes, secondary sir. is subpar. Nope, and he finally got to the playoffs last year, too, which is good to see. Mm -hmm. He's got his offense well put together. Uh, he's got the good pieces there. Yeah, no, it's nice to see Wilkerson make a comeback. He's, you know, Wilkerson played a few seasons, then he kind of turned away and went with Jamison Ward, and then Wilkerson got his job back this year, and he made the playoffs. Uh, that running back he's got, Kendrick, has just, you know, had almost 1,800 yards this year, so... So good to see Kevin make it back in. Maybe not for Chris, but well, I'm good with it. I I, I like the competition. We got a nice tough division. You, you want that? And then we have the other linebacker. This is Jug's guy. Looks like he's going to be a monster. I haven't picked him up yet. This was the no, guy and that's... that I honestly was going to take at my pick, but I was like, I just can't do linebacker again. I just can't. Nope, and he was on my short list for early on, and then that linebacker that uh, Bob got as well. In terms of true linebackers, he's he's the best of the bunch. Um, t Zach, like I said, I don't see him as a linebacker as much as I see him as a tweener defensive end. Yep. Yeah, he's not going to really drop either. He's within, it's like yep. a wash. You know, um, I wonder if people were afraid because there was no workout for him, no combines. No, it's that, you know, with later picks, especially with bars that high, that, that the no combines doesn't bother me at all. Yep, same same for me. I don't mind the no combines, you know, uh, when they got big bars. If it's, you know, mediocre bars, then I worry more about it because they might drop. But this guy, even if he drops, he's still, still going to be at 55, 60 rated. Yeah, and I know he says, linebacker. you know, strong side linebacker, but 20 bucks, a, oh, I, I can almost guarantee Juggs is moving him to middle because that's what he's fit for, you know, identifies as. Yeah. And he needs a middle linebacker. So Absolutely. This, this, is, this is just a fucking great pick, especially yes. this late. I mean, how many guys could have used this guy that were picking 10 picks earlier, you know? Absolutely. Look at, look at his um, defense. He needed a linebacker. Yep. He's got Marlon Winsett, but yeah, this guy moves to the middle and starts right away, and bet you he's defensive rookie of the year. And he had a top defense. What was his defense ranked number two? Uh, ten overall, two against rushing, thirty-one against pass, but uh, number one scoring defense. That's what it was. Number one scoring defense. Yep. It's the only one that matters. Yes, it does. Yes, and that tends to be if you can stop people in the red zone. Good pick, Jugs. I like to pick. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be a great middle linebacker for years. Then next up is pick twenty five. Oh, it's us. I like this guy, and I told Grim he came in underrated for me, for my scouts. And um, yeah, so I pulled the trigger on him. Yeah, see, Where and the see. My team? Seeing this clay really makes me <coughs> glad that you didn't trade three firsts <laughs> to go up and get a defensive end. What's that? I said, seeing this pick makes me really glad you didn't trade your three firsts to go up and get that defensive end. Uh, yeah, Sorry, that's what I, I was saying. saying it was, it was I was saying you pick. can't pick yourself from the right clay. Sorry. I was yeah, muted there. Thank, I didn't realize it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, no, no, you're on, you're on the left clay. You're on the left clay. I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> um. No, yeah. he's going to be a huge help, man. So let's yeah, see excellent pick. Oh, he's going to go up, too. Yes, yeah, so the league has him at 55. My guy has him at 64. I needed a, a safety on my team. Uh, I need to fix my defense, as everyone knew. So he'll Are you going to keep him at yeah. strong? Or? Um, yes, I'll keep him probably yeah, strong. I'd, I'd, I'd keep him at strong, and I'd also, you know, he's also a guy that, you know, if you need to, you can put him in as your nickel back, and he'd be a perfect fit as a nickel, too. True. You are correct because of his own. Nope. Yeah, yeah but no. I, he just, great pick. Great pick. Yep. 
that endurance, you're going to have to take him out of a couple formations, but at least your one one three, regular and long, he'll be in that for sure. Yeah, that's, that's it. Honestly, I, that I, endurance, I, he'll he'll honestly be able to play in pretty much every one. I mean, for for the secondary, for some reason, safeties, you only need their endurance to be in the fifty to sixty range, and they can play pretty much every down without being tired. Yep, so let's see which bars go up um, after PS two and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I always love safeties. I, I was shocked that a lot of safeties fell and no one picked up safeties. So when he was sitting there, I was like, perfect. Underrated. Well, honestly, the, honestly, there wasn't a ton of great safeties in there either. I mean, I think these three that were picked in the first round were probably about the ones, you know? For sure. But yes. No, I love the pick, and you need help, secondary help. And you got your D-line help, and shit's going to be good. Yes. Get back into um, Better. a winning season. Again. I can't say good, Clay, but I can say it should be better next year for you on defense. Mm-hmm. Should be. So that was pick 125. Um, 26, left tackle. Uh, Fort Wayne again. He had two first-round picks. Hmm. Well, if you're going to be running all the time, it's not a bad pick. And it is this guy right here. No. No. Coulter. There it is. Yeah. Coulter. What's the no, league he's... scout say? Seven. Eh, so that could be drop. a problem. But he's still going to be a good, a good run blocker. And if that's he's a, what he's looking he's a to do. Light. I really hope he can gain weight because if he's going to stay that light, you got to play him at left guard. He ain't going to move to center good either. So, yeah, that's true. But he did. He did need a a tackle. He doesn't have shit for tackles, so that's definitely, I think, a need pick. Yeah, because that Ricky uh, Hammond kid that he drafted last year at one three did not pan out. Yeah, all, all, I'll say, kid? all I can say about this guy is Ricky free Hammond. agency. Free agency. There's guys like this all yep. the time. Absolutely. Because he's got no pass blocking. So, you know, although I like him, I don't know that you pick this guy in the first round because you could probably wait until late free agency or free agency after training camp and get a guy like this in, you know, maybe maybe not quite as good. Maybe he's only a 52, 53 rated guy, but with the same bars, you know, in terms of run blocking and yeah. you can get him for dirt cheap, you know. So I, I don't know. Yeah, the run blockers are all, are all <clears throat> excuse me, are all over the place later on. But yeah. it, 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 I like this pick outside of the weight. At, at that weight for a left tackle, I couldn't draft him in the first round. But what do you couldn't. what do you like this pick, Grim? Well, I kind of do. Well, he need he needs tackles. That guy that he drafted last year at one three kind of looks like he's a dud. That Riddick Hammond. And, but again, I, I don't like the pick because he's too light. And like Chris just said, he's, you can get guys like this in free agency. What I, what, 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 I, what yeah. I experience with guys like this playing a tackle that are light in weight, they get beat. Yep. I have yep. a guy whose bars are almost maxed, but he's light. And he always got beat. However, I put him at guard, never gets beat. Yeah, no. This guy needs to play at guard. I don't like to yep. pick. Left, I agree left with guard or, or right guard if you can get him to gain a bunch of weight. But... Yeah, but he's I, not I, But I agree with six max. three. You, you can get a guy like this in free agency with, yep. with bars yep. like this. Um, not at pick 126. And he's 24. And he's not got the looks of a guy that you want to have around for the next 10 seasons so that's where free agency would be perfect to find this guy you know this isn't a guy you want to build you know have for your starting guard for the next 10 seasons what's his um intelligence um grim he is uh, he was 30 let me find him again here 
Where are you, Coulter? He's thirty-one, so he's also yeah. Soul be... score twenty-two. He's he's not terrible. It's not horrible, but thirty-one still. This guy is going to get you a lot of penalties. And... Maybe eight to ten. Click on that Riddick Hammond kid that he drafted at one three last year, Cliff. And I think if we look at this guy and what happened to him, we'll see why he was kind of desperate for another tackle. Eh, looks like the same guy to me, only with worse, worse endurance. endurance. But, but again, if you're looking for a carbon running. copy to run on the other side because the Hammond's, you know, a big dude. He's perfect for right tackle. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. I mean, and, and if I was running as much as he is. So yeah. Hammond's Hammond's a decent pick, but for yeah, one three, for at, yeah, at well, one yeah. three though, <laughs> yeah, you know? no. Again, here's a guy that you know you could probably pick up, and you know you might have to you know spend some money in free agency to get him. But again, a guy that you could pick up someone similar to him in free agency because he doesn't have the pass blocking, and that's kind of the premium skill for a left tackle in particular. Yeah, but even look at that—that that seventh round pick. The tight or the Much, center. I mean, yeah, I, I like this guy. Almost better than Coulter. Let's see. What he looks like. Twenty-six. Let's see. What he looks like on the board for him. Um, All right. Hmm. Well, what's the league scout say? 50. Yeah, he's he's going to go up a little bit. Yeah, he's, close he's, to a wash, but he's 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 almost the same. What's his weight? Yeah, he's, he's built Decent exactly the same. Yep. Doesn't have any workouts, so you can't really That's the same the player, combine. except for six rounds apart. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. And he's 21. God damn. This guy's 21 can, yep. in the seventh he's younger. Round. This guy's 24. Yes. Yep, and the soul score is a 40. I bet you he's a whole hell of a lot smarter. Oh, yeah, he's a blue guy. He's easy. Yeah, uh, blah, blah, blah. Where the hell are you? Gillespie is 79 intelligence. Yeah, blue exactly. Guy. So... You know, so you six rounds him. later, he he got a guy that's probably a better quality starter slash long term guy than the guy he took in the first. Yeah, round. but also kudos for the fucking sleeper pick. You know, shit. Yeah, no, great <laughs> seventh round. Pick, not <laughs> a great first say, round. Pick. That's it's, a great seventh round pick. So he's got a wash in the thing. He got a yeah. bad pick at one twenty five. I mean, one twenty six. But now he got a guy in the seventh round that makes yeah. up for it. He got a mulligan in the seventh. Yep. Nice. All right, so here's the other right tackle that came off the board. And now this is Swing Dog. Nope, that's uh, Brian. Brian, I meant. That's Saw. Yeah, I like this guy, too. His endurance is a little weak, but you know, I think the the, it, the, the uh, jury's still out on whether endurance on your old line but matters. I I know you I think, think it, it does. I yeah, but I, yeah, I know you I, think it doesn't. doesn't. I think it does, shit. but I've heard I've heard other people who think it doesn't mean anything. I Man, I've got so many same guys that you know I'll, I will get the low endurance guys, but when they get tired, I will swap them out yep. because I just like I said, I, I got anecdotal evidence. I need to start writing shit down. But when I play guys tired, man, they're getting beat, especially towards the end of games. I notice I can't fucking run at all. Beat or injured, I think. Yep, beat injured, and I can't run anymore. Um. So he's a yellow guy, high intelligence at 51. I'd probably play him at right guard. A little too light for right tackle. I, he doesn't really look like he needs guards, but, you know, he's, he's He doesn't still look right. like he needs tackles either. He's, well, yes, well, he does. He Quack, does. He, yeah, he needs, Quackenbush yeah. is, you know, there. Well, well Quackenbush, what, what's he playing? Is he playing left tackle? Because he doesn't have a left tackle. So well, he who's is, he planning on playing at left? What's Quackenbush look like? Quackenbush is a little right light. Tackle. Too so maybe he's playing. Yeah, he's left tackle. Left tackle. Yeah, he's got to yeah. be the left tackle. But this guy's light as well. So yeah, well, who knows what it'll do? But I like the pick. It was a good. I think it was a good value pick at the end of the first round. Yeah, yeah. What does the scout say? I like him too, and he's going to go up in. Um... Yep. Cool. Yep. He's got a little bump coming for him. Yep. I like um, him. Good pick. Very good pick. Yes. Yeah, so. I... And then we got twenty eighth, which is a linebacker. That was uh, red zone. So yep. zone this, this guy, guy this guy was on my list when I talked with Bob about him I'm like that's a pretty you know because he traded down with end. Ben to get this guy but uh, even for him it's a good consolation prize and I would have tried to gain gain him weight and move him to defensive end I moved him to defensive end even if he stayed at 258 
that 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 dude's gonna be a good good pass rusher. He doesn't have good enough zone for me to want him at, at linebacker. Yeah, yeah, he, he's definitely going to be a, a defensive end for me. Well, I mean, he'd, he'd be he'd be fine as a three four weak side linebacker. I mean, if if you're running a three four, he's a he's a good he's a good weak side. Linebacker. Oh yeah, that's. But if you're yeah, running a four three, he's definitely a, a defensive end. Nope, and that's right because Bob did move to three four this year. So yeah, so he's a great perfect weak side weak side linebacker. Yep. Well, he's got he's got um. The linemen, his offensive line is in in place. His defensive line is seems to be in place. He needs linebackers. Yep. What's that? Uh, what's Salinas look like? Salinas lo- is, looks great, and I'm. Uh, I know. Oh yeah, Bob same, was same talking place. about blitzing him a bit, but I'm like, no, this guy is too small to do that. You play him at weak inside. He's covering all your fucking passes, covering your run. You can blitz him a couple times if you want to, but this Bernstein kid's got to be yeah, the main yeah, blitzer two, at weak yeah, side. Yeah, two twenty six. He's way too light to be a. He's got to play on the inside. Yep, yeah, for sure. And God damn it, but Bob, yeah, why aren't you here yeah, to that, explain your pick? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bernstein for sure. That's that's got to be his weak side linebacker. That that guy's going to be money over there. Now he's going to uh-huh. dip a little bit based upon what my scout's saying. So I don't yeah, know where the, it would be. The, the the bench press is is going to be, I guess, maybe an issue. I bet. Yeah, uh, I still think even if he ends up being a fifty-two rated guy, he's gonna he's gonna still be a great. Yeah, if that pass rush technique sticks. That's what you want yep. for those linebackers when they're blitzing. Yep. And the play diagnosis. You know, he's got a high school soul score there. So that I mean, yeah, I think he's gonna be a real good weak side linebacker. Good endurance. Yeah, Bob. Yeah, has, want him in coverage. He, he's, he's, yellow. He's, he's got a good roster, Bob. Yeah, he sure does. Yeah, he was left with some some okay stuff, but man, he's made some moves and mm-hmm. just really put this shit together, yeah. you know, in in short 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 times. So, all right, that was pick one twenty eight. We have three and four more picks. Uh, defensive tackle. Your brother took him, C Max. Yeah, I kind of see him the same way. I see the what was it, one twelve that the other D tackle was taken. You know, I think think this guy's this guy if he if he hits his potential, he's going to be a really good. He's a def- he's a defensive end. Yeah, but he, he's well. Oh, he's the end. I thought he's. Oh, I thought that was two ninety one. I thought he was going to bulk him up. No, nope. eh, as a defensive end. Yeah, he'd still be all right, but I'm not as excited about him as a defensive end. My scouts see him as a league scout. 69, he'll finish up at. Yes. Yeah, he'll yeah. finish up at that. But yeah, he'll be I, all right. I mean, yeah, he doesn't, have any, he doesn't have any good defensive ends, so I think this is a great pick. This was really yeah, a neat for, pick. For the end of, yeah, for the end of the round. He's, and, if, and if he gets 72 out of that pass rush technique, he's going to be a, he's gonna be a serviceable rusher too. So Yeah. Yeah, so I yep. like the pick. And he's got good endurance. He can play every formation, every down. Yep. I do. I also yeah. like to pick as well. Good endurance, yeah, we, a pass rush technique, it. if he can get that in a run defense. Yeah, we see you yeah. interviewed him, so. Mm-hmm. So you was looking at him. I was looking at as many defensive linemen as possible. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, next up is a tight end. So Houston... Now this is between Rick and Ken making this pick. Well, it's not because Rick has not been involved in the team. Remember the text Clay? He said he hasn't. He's doing his landscaping and shit. He has not looked at anything. He hasn't done shit. He's okay. even put his. He's playing in that one league. I can't remember which one, but he said he put that on AI too. So he's out for a couple of weeks. All right. So here it is. Ken takes the pick. He takes this. Um tight end again i'm gonna say it for me the route running is just it's barely there if 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 it drops let's see what the league scouts say um i like to see a higher route running uh courage is nice i like that third down adjust to the ball i like avoid drops yeah so he may go down yeah he's, he's basically the same guy i took only without run blocking ability Yes, I have to agree with um, C Max on this. He's almost identical. Yep, and and I 
like I said, I like him. He's going to be a serviceable guy. If you don't try to overuse him, I think he'll be a, a good quality guy and a decent value at the end of the first. Well, so maybe this signals that he's not going to sign Floyd Shelton this year. That's what I was looking the last at. year of his contract, and Floyd is. Floyd's going to probably want a boatload of money. Yeah, and he ain't got it. He's going to want like 30 or 40 million. No, he doesn't have it. He only has $120,000. Mm. And if anyone but holds out production wise, production wise, might, who? on on that guy on that on that tight end there, he I mean he wasn't all that of you know he didn't put up huge numbers, so he might not be wanting that much. He might be able to sign him for close to that fifteen. I don't know. Maybe I got to hit him up for a trade. There you go. Yeah. Oh. That's the beauty about this show. You get to see the inside and call up the guys now. Yeah, no, that I, this again, I, I love how we just basically, I mean, we're not deep diving into a lot of rosters and stuff, but we're looking at the rosters. Like We get to know all the players on everybody's fucking team. You might see somebody like, hey, well, you just drafted this tight end. You're not going to be able to sign this guy. Maybe I can get him for a fucking third, second, something, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because at first I was going, well, why the hell did he draft this guy when he's got Floyd Shelton? then you realize he doesn't have any money. This guy's in the last year of his contract. So makes sense. Oh, I'm sure a phone call is going tonight to um, Ken. Could very well be. And Chad, that, that route running really needs to go up on this guy. Otherwise, he's not going to be worth shit. I uh, agree. That that's, it's For me, it would be useless. If if it was like, like I told C-Max, past the 50, like 55... Yeah. Uh, I would like to pick. Yep. Yeah, because he's no, got I... good courage. You want your tight end to be able to go over the middle, so. Uh, then this is um, Julio. So Julio yep. takes this guy. Uh, why am I blanking on Julio's Down team? Down to Gothenburg. Yeah, there we go. And who was this cornerback? I mean, Julian Welch. Got him. Yeah, he didn't. Well, let's see. 57. Doesn't look like he super needed him, but you're at the end of the first round, man. You grab, you grab who you think is good. Yeah, I liked, I liked Julian Welch, although you know he he didn't reveal quite as well as he looks with the blue bars there. I had that punishing hitter though, all the way up, fourteen reps. You would think that yeah. bump and run, that bump and run's got to come up, but that looks like it's gonna. He's gonna sit right about there. I don't mm. like him at all. There's no man to man. There's no zone. Um, yeah, if it, if it would have been, yeah, if the if the the man to man would have been a little high. Well, if he gets to sixty, that's serviceable. But I want them all seventy plus if I can get it that way. I don't play a whole lot of bump and run, so I don't worry about that as much. The league scout has my 57. I have my 57, so pretty much it's going to be around there. That's Yeah, that looks like as advertised. Yeah, hmm. he's serviceable if he gets to 60 on the man, man to man, but it is the end of the first round. I, I don't hate the pick. Like I said, with that bench being what it is, I would suspect that bump and run might come up because I know Julio plays a bunch of press. So if that bump and run comes up, I think it's worth it. If not, this is a rough pick. Oh, and Barrymore is uh, holding, holding out. out. And he's got eight Ouch. million to spend, or five million actually to spend. Oh. Well, this is, yeah, probably going to, I bet you he just lets him ride. You hold out as long as you need to, buddy, because this is the last year of your career anyways. I mean, he's already 33, was he? 34? Well, you know what? I take that back. He's got 62 players on the contract, so he can dump some players and get some money back. Yeah. Yeah, he can, he can free up some money. But again, Barry is 32. He's probably got some other options at wide receiver there that he can make work. They probably just let him hold out for a couple games and go, eh, you know, come back when you well, want and to. He, and he might not be asking for a whole lot more money. He might just want, you know, more years because it's the final year. 
mean, he might yeah, not want, want to that give much him more, more use than at that point. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Barry Moore's good though. So if he if he plays another two three seasons and cohesion, you know, the cohesion and uh, still the best receiver on the roster, and he'll probably go twelve and four, even with Barry Moore yeah. on uh, the bench. Well, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I don't honestly don't see anybody taking this division for a long time. Julio's owned it for so fucking long right at this point. Don't don't even matter. And here's the last player that was picked. Free safety, Hanalei. Yep. I really liked that guy. I mean, I, I prefer more interception, but you know, maxed out. I'm interested to see because he's got two studs at free or safety anyways. I might play that guy, like I said, cornerback and put him in the slot. Nickel or the nickel. Yeah. You can reach out to him and see if he'll trade somebody to you. Maybe um, he doesn't need more. Picks. I'm not trading. No <laughs> one to, well, I'm not trading. <laughs> he don't need to more picks. Fuck that. And he's only 21. <laughs> he, yeah. No, this guy's a, this guy's going to be, yeah. I, like I said, maybe play the corner. I, I like this guy too. Um, He's also going to bump up. Yeah. They have like that, like this guy said, the magic vision. They can see things that we can't see. Yep. Look at that. Yeah, Pick 30, 32. Well, again, we'll go with that 40 yard dash. Doesn't ma match with that man demand should be maxed out. So there you have it. Yeah. What's the static bar on, on, um, Defensive backs, interceptions, mm -hmm. and punishing hitter, and neither one is showing anything really. Right? They're showing it low. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's weird because that those bench reps that punishing hitter should be better than that. And maybe is he reading it that way, saying this should be higher? No, well, not necessarily, because he's that's just a regular bench. 15 it's not yeah 15 yeah that's yeah that's yeah that's not that high for a safety safety okay. one in the 18 to 21 20 like yeah okay <clears throat> well fellas that is the draft i know a lot of people didn't like the players that were on there not real talents well i would say in the review here there weren't that many players that any of us were all that excited about no, not super, and I think there's only one that uh, Percy Ewiak that we all thought was just terror. Well, and the oops pick with OBX. Oh, yeah, well, that was an oops book. Yeah, and everyone was like, oh, I like the pick, but like you guys said, nothing excited. The only one that was very exciting was my pick. I was very excited about my guy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I was. I'm excited impressed. for it too. I like that pick a lot, especially that late in the draft. Uh, so, yeah, um, I don't think anybody did horrible. I mean, there was a, there was a few doozy picks, but I, considering what what there was available, I mean, it was it was a tough it was a tough draft to have a pick that you're really happy. Yes, about. this this was yeah this was a this was a hard draft. Like I said, you you, you start getting to these drafts where there's like not really any skill players whatsoever that just like pop out at you it, it, then you start getting these struggles you know yes and um so it's gonna be interesting to see how everyone improved their team to take the next step or people went backwards yep well if you got time i'm down for season predictions next week so i don't think i have a date I made it for Friday instead of Sunday. So I might be around. Well, even if you did, just, just bring her on. Put her in the headphones and give her a mic. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can show her how to play the game. <laughs> that would be fun. Uh, yeah, it could. It could be fun. <laughs> uh, tomorrow's training camp, correct? Yes, sir. Yep. I still got to get my shit done. So. I got my file then ready. 
Yeah. And, um, oh, you should tell what's his name. Um, Tex Ken. Make sure they do their play- playbook the right way this time. Yeah, like I said, I don't. I think uh, Rick's out, and Ken did well last year without him anyway. So All right, there you go. Yes, sir. All right, fellas. Let me end the recording. And then.